When thinking of New Year's resolutions, most people think of health and getting in shape physically. Yeah, but there is more to taking care of your body than just, than just physically. It's important to get in shape mentally as well. Yeah, joining us for Mental Health Monday is Dr. Nicole Siegfried. Doctor, thanks for joining us. Uh, so many people focused on hitting the gym once the New Year starts. We wanted to highlight the importance of mental health, though. Where should people start? I love this. I think you're exactly right that usually people are making um, resolutions around losing weight or starting to exercise more. And one of the things we know is that actually these usually fail within the first month after making that resolution. And so having much more of a focus on mental health may not only provide better well-being, but will also be more attainable and achievable. So there's lots of places that you can start. The first is to set a reasonable, what we call SMART goals. And it's an acronym for specific or simplistic, um, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. And so even if we're setting a goal in terms of mental health, we'll want it to be something like that, rather than saying, I just want to feel better. That's going to be really vague and unachievable. How would you know when you achieve that? And instead saying something like, these are the things I'm going to do on a daily basis. One thing is to set up in a therapy appointment. This can be daunting, but now there are guidelines online for step-by-step -step of how to set up an appointment, what to look for in a therapist. Doctor, tell me this. Explain the importance of talk therapy for people who think that you really need to be struggling really badly in order to reap its benefits. Well, we've come a long way in terms of the stigma around mental health. And now more and more people are understanding that you don't need to be in a severe state of mental illness to seek therapy. What we know now is that even my, what we consider minor struggles, adjustment struggles, new job, um, new move, can benefit from psychotherapy. And so my encouragement is for people to not wait until things get really severe, but to think of this as preventive and to reach out to meet with the therapist early on so that things don't get to that severe state. And doctor, a lot of people want to do therapy, but they just don't have the financial means to do it. So are there free services? There are. And many therapists work on a sliding scale as well that can meet the needs, the financial needs of um, clients who are coming in. There are also um, more um, financially viable options um, in terms of community mental health. Um, that uh, people can seek out. Um, support groups are free, and these are available as well online. I suggest looking at things like NAMI, the National Association of Mental Illness, um, which has a lot of resources that can be utilized for those that are more low, low income. And doctor, uh, a lot of folks still dealing with the repercussions of the pandemic. Uh, what are you seeing from people? Just they just feel a need to talk to somebody. What, what kind of a, a thing? What kind of what are you seeing from people? Well, one of the things we know is that the the after effects of the pandemic or the continuing effects of the pandemic are more long term in terms of mental health. So even though we're not wearing masks anymore, we're vaccinated the impact on our mental health continues, that we look at the pandemic as a trigger for some underlying mental health issues. And so what we're continuing to see is high levels of anxiety. We've seen um, higher levels of anxiety um, that have increased um, over the past couple of years, higher levels of depression, and people feeling a lot of hopelessness um, even going into the new year. Thank you so much, Dr. Nicole Siegfried. We could continue this conversation. We really wish you a happy new year, and we hope 2023 is just good for everyone. Yeah. Thanks, Thank Doctor. Thank you. Thank you.